Hey there! My name is Chris and we're here to talk about these. Particularly how to read them, and more importantly how to write them. This is a show for writers and novelists, aspiring or established, and we'll give you all the tips and tricks that any decent writer wants to learn or master. We're speaking smart talk like academia does, but we're doing it in a way more casual setting. Think of this as a novelist lecture hall, or just a place to nerd out about literature. If that's your sort of thing, you're in the right place. Hands down, the most frequent question established authors get from aspiring writers and average people who'd like to write something themselves is, how do you do it? How do you write a book? Seems like a prudent question to start on. You'll hear a lot of people saying that writing any sort of book is simply too hard. Can't do it. It takes a real visionary to tell a beautiful story. And that is fundamentally wrong. Writing is not hard. I'm not saying it's a cakewalk either. But unlike every other artistic medium average people encounter, literature is by far the most widely understood. These days, illiteracy is down to 15% worldwide, and with the globalization of cultures, a book is no longer imprisoned by its native language. We're at a powerful moment in human history, where most of the people on the planet can read the written word, understand it, and think critically about it. That's a pretty momentous occasion, if you ask me. Furthermore, for the average person, there's not a whole lot left to learn. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video can write. And I'm pretty sure if you had to, you could tell someone a story by writing it down. Even if it's what happened to Mary Sue yesterday or what happened when you went out to run errands. Advanced writing is still difficult, but it's definitely not impossible. If you're intellectual enough to write a comment on a YouTube video, you're intellectual enough to become an author. So for those eager people already flexing their fingers and dreaming up a plot, some advice to get the gears turning. Rule number one, write. No, seriously, write. I know it sounds dumb and obvious, but seriously, write. Do it. You know what stops the average writer from actually writing a novel and telling their story? Themselves. There are tons of reasons writers don't write. They don't think they're good enough, they think they have bad grammar, they don't have time, they don't know where to start, blah blah blah. Just write. Make it a routine. Every day at this time, write something. Write anything. Write a diary, write a short story, describe a scene. You can write Twilight fanfiction as far as anyone cares, just do it. The longer you sit around on your butt doing nothing, the less likely you'll finish a book. If you're scared about your skill level, know that even the best authors, Shakespeare, Wilde, Kerouac, Rowling, Green, they all had to start somewhere. If you're worried about what to write, remember that it doesn't matter. Even if your story never sees the light of day, it's still practice. Practice is key if you want to improve, and there's never end to your improvement as a writer. There's always room to grow. So, write. Just write. Rule number two, read. Remember how I said the best authors had to start somewhere? They started with what they knew. They read lots of literature. Books, journals, short stories, poems, everything. Do the same. The more things you read, the more styles of writing you expose yourself to, and the stronger you'll be as a writer when you try to put words down on paper yourself. Don't simply speed read. Take your time with it. Look how the author uses language to convey their stories. Are they simple or long-winded? Detailed or sparse? Simple or elegant? Read everything, including crappy books. In fact, the worst, least enjoyable books are probably the best for writers to read. If you as a reader are not connecting with your book, you'll be more likely to spot the problems and less likely to make the same mistakes. Finally, bonus points if you write a little elementary school style book report. It might sound childish, but analyzing a novel can help you come to terms with the pros and cons of a book. If you take the time to sit down and ask yourself, how did this make me feel, and put it down in your own words, you'll be better for it. Highlight the problems and praise the good points. More so, try to explain, to others or yourself, why the piece was good or bad. Be as thorough as you want. Like we said, practice makes perfect. The more you write, the better you get. Simple. Tip number three, make an outline. Outlines get groans from almost every author in every field of writing. Experienced writers often feel like they're too skilled for outlines, and novice writers think they'll be able to make it up along the way. I don't doubt the skill of strong writers, and nobody can dampen the ingenuity of novices. But organizing your thoughts makes the task of writing a sweeping piece of literature infinitely less scary. Architects don't build a building from scratch. They need blueprints. Why should a writer be any different? Your outline is not a prism. It won't confine your creativity, and it won't make writing any more difficult. To quote a fair pirate, it's more like guidelines than actual rules. An outline will give you a clear path to follow as you write, and also points out potentially huge plot holes early on. If it doesn't make sense as an outline, something's off, and you need to tinker with it a bit before you actually start the real grunt work of writing. If your ideas change halfway through writing your story, change the outline to fit the alterations. And when revising your outline, make sure there are no new plot holes, because if you reach one while you're doing the tough job of writing, you might fall in and get stuck. 
Tip number four, keep your audience in mind. People don't write stuff just to write. Even if you're the only person that you intend to read the short story you dreamed up, it still means you're writing to someone, even if that someone is yourself. Try to think of your audience. Who would you want to read this if you could? And yes, include yourself. Think about it for a little bit and write to them. Don't be afraid to do what you want to please others, but at the same time, don't push people away either. Don't try flowery language with the intention of impressing people. Only use fancy words if you know what it means and only if it fits what you're writing. If you're writing to 10 year olds, don't contemplate the interconnectivity of emotional camaraderie. Your audience won't have a clue what you're talking about. And don't assume that people will pick up a dictionary and figure out what a word means. If you're watching this, you're probably in love with words. Not everyone's gonna nerd out on adjectives like you will. Finally, and probably the most important tip of all, we go to the great Douglas Adams for inspiration. His words of advice? Don't panic. Chill, bro. Like I said, writing a book isn't easy. It's tough. It's a lot of work, a lot of critical thinking, and a lot of dedication. It's going to take a lot out of you, mentally and emotionally, especially the longer you write a particular piece. Don't panic. If you reread a passage and see 10 zillion problems, don't panic. If you can't figure out what the perfect title or scene or character or name or word, don't panic. If you feel like you're completely stuck and everything seems stupid and hopeless, don't panic. Relax. Take a break. Eat some food. Grab a cup of tea or coffee. Read a book. Watch a movie. Go outside. If you stress about your writing, you're going to write stressful literature. Remember this very important truth. When writing, you are never writing to reach the end. Actually, writing your book is merely the first step in a longer process. And the longer step one takes you, the longer the entire process is going to take you. The more you fret about things, the more time you'll be wasting doing nothing. So go do something to clear your head, calm down, and come back when you've got your head on straight. Don't panic. It'll be alright. And that was probably more than enough for the first episode. I think it's pretty clear that writing is very complicated. There are lots of facets that go into creating a piece of literature, and we haven't even kicked the dust off of some of the gigantic topics mentioned in this episode. So we'll just save some more of that for later. Thanks for hanging around. I'll see you next time.